Um, so, um, yeah, it's okay. That's yeah. all right. Test, 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 test. Working? Yep. Okay, good morning everyone. The judge today uh, gave actually quite a good summary for those who were present in the court about what the proceedings are all about, that they relate to um, our request for the child not to be removed from Australia. We have sought and been granted through consent with the um, parties that the child not the injunction be extended until the 18th of September and that the matter be relisted for an interlocutory hearing on the 18th of September also and in between that there will be a lot of filing of documents pertaining to the case so as the judge indicated this is only the first part of this case so if um, after the interlocutory hearing it goes further it will be set down for a full hearing of which that date is not determined and as the judge indicated the injunction would generally hold out until that time as a final decision so that's a summary of the legal process i'm happy to take any questions on anything else in the meantime what happens to the family the family will remain in detention at christmas island i haven't heard anything further otherwise that's not satisfactory surely i don't think i'll comment on that at this stage i mean it's not satisfactory that they remain in detention i think everyone agrees with that but that's not a subject of this court proceeding at the minute what is the evidence that you're seeking from um the government and now that you've added a home affairs minister peter dutton to the well, proceeding i can't discuss that at this stage that's really not my call because it's going to depend on the on what happens after the interlocutory application so and whether further evidence is needed witnesses need to be called etc it's really hard to predict i mean the, this has worked far more um, fast than most cases in this jurisdiction um, so the parties are doing everything that they can but it still does take time and that's our legal process to make sure it's fair What's the, the significance of adding the, the Home Affairs Minister, Peter Dutton? It's as much also a procedural issue rather than anything political. So what's changed since, uh, since Wednesday? Before you were arguing that the case had to be properly assessed uh, or had to be considered, now you're arguing that she should stay here essentially? Yeah, it, there's really no change other than what we were arguing before, other than we have given more detail in relation to our application. The change on um, that happened on Tuesday night was that the minister had decided not to use his referral power but at the, at the end of the day it just meant that we needed to change the way that we approached it. We had, did file in the lower court to ensure that we don't end up with a jurisdictional issue later on and as um, those who were just present in that that has also now been transferred to the federal court. So, so Karina would you um, at all be considering the possibility of trying to somehow apply to have the family removed from Christmas Island while this process is going and have them removed elsewhere whether it's returned back to Melbourne detention centre or somewhere else? That's something that I need to talk to the clients about in all honesty about that and today's proceedings etc and it may be something that, they, something that we look at to put to the minister's lawyers of course I can't guarantee that they would be transferred from there. Have you spoken to the family since this? Yes yeah I've spoken I haven't yet from today because there's still quite a bit of paperwork that needs doing in relation to this today so but I will talk to them later today also noting the time difference as now, well. You know them so well would they be so frustrated about this wouldn't they? They understand the process, so I think sometimes there's um, an indication that it's only the lawyers involved in all of this. Actually, both clients, because remember there are clients on both sides of this, do understand the process. So they are fully aware of what's going on. It is being explained to them through an interpreter, so they also understand. Um, yes, there's frustrating, frustrating in that it can't all be resolved overnight, but that's also the legal process that we have, and we have a fair process in Australia to ensure that rights are protected. And how, what is their state of mind at the moment in terms of their Oh, I, I mean, there's no doubt it's stressful. <laughs> Litigation is stressful for anyone who's been through it, but it's even more stressful when you're, you know, detained in an area you don't know and in the circumstances that they are. No matter how... 
no matter how this progresses from here, if you're successful, do you still require the minister's support and intervention? Yes, and I think I've said that from day one, that still remains the case. And, and we are open to negotiation on this matter. I mean, there are other ways to mediate disputes and we remain open on those issues to discuss alternative plans. I am aware of what was put to the media last night. Our position on that in relation to um, going back to Sri Lanka to lodge a labour agreement I think was suggested. We have not received anything from the Minister's office or any department officer as to that um, option. Um, I, our position would be that we do not support them being returned to Sri Lanka to apply, but we are open to, to discussing other options. I would also add that it also remains that the bar can be lifted to enable other options onshore. There, Section 46A allows for any type of visa that the Minister determines them to be able to apply for, so that remains on the tables and we are open for discussion. But How long can this drag on for? How long do you think on that? Like it appears that they're not, they're not going to budge on that at all. So where, where does that leave you? Well, that's, I guess, for them to consider. I mean, you know, things can change. Um, there's still hope, I think, um, and maybe if discussions could take place, maybe the parties could come to agreement in a way to resolve it. How, how long can this drag on for, though? I mean, how long? Well, I mean, if it goes to a final hearing, it could be months, yeah, yeah, so yeah. Freddie, regards of your best uh, intentions and the work you've done, which has been obviously extensive, is it really an unwinnable battle, given the fact that the government has said we are in Look, like anyone, governments can change their position on things. We know that through other ministerial powers, which have been highly publicised this week, where they have been used. I would add one other thing with the public interest power, which is really important, is that it is a public interest power. There has been discussion within both the media and also from various po politicians to say that it's a national interest power. It's not. The Migration Act does have powers which do refer to the national interest. This doesn't. It is a public interest power. It is open to be reconsidered. Yes, it does require the minister potentially changing their position. I appreciate that, but there is ways to do that. We're still um, maintaining the, the border, you know, the, I guess the enforcement of our borders um, and doing it in a compassionate way as well. Do you wish that you were dealing with a minister, federal minister, that wasn't so hard-lined about this? No, I can't, I'm not, it's too hard a question to even answer. I mean, you know, the government has made their position clear in terms of where it is. We're just saying this is an exceptional case. And I mean, even since this has been running, what, I can't even remember now, was it Thursday night? Um, and, you know, it, if anything, it's, it's got even more momentum in terms of community support. As I've said before, I understand that not all the community supports it, but it does have a large amount of the community supporting it, whether it be through social media, letters to the editor, news reports, um, you know, all types, um, people being present, even in the courtroom today, the judge has acknowledged that it's got a lot of community presence to it, and that is what we are asking the minister to consider. Karina, it sounds like you're sort of, from what you're saying, that you're really kind of clinging to hope at this point in time. I mean, you're always cling clinging to hope. I mean, that's part of, I mean, it is a personal power. There's no, it has always been that the only, person who can intervene is the minister. I mean, there are things going on with regard to the procedure also that may influence it that and that's something else to be considered. The Prime Minister has said though that he won't be moved by Twitter or public sentiment. Uh, aren't they really making it very clear that they're not going to change their minds? And, and can they, if they've dug in their heels this deep, can they be seen to change their minds? That's not for me. I don't know that I can comment any more on that than what I've already said. So can we just clarify one thing? If it yeah, I'm going to take months, two more questions and then I have to move on. Yep. If, it, if, as you say, it could drag on for months, will you make an application to have the proof on Christmas Island? Oh, look, I haven't even got that far yet. So that's something that we need to consider as a, a legal team as and with the clients. 
involved as to what we do in relation to that, noting that it is a bit beyond our control um, because at the end of the day it is the Minister's decision. It's obviously also expensive keeping them at Christmas Island. There may be better alternate um, platforms for where they could be um, and that may be something that the Minister may be open to but I can't I have, we haven't yet put that to the Minister's office. How was the judge selected to hear this matter today? How was the judge? Yes. Why did they select this particular justice? Oh, I, I wouldn't even, there's nothing I can say on that issue. I Who mean, I well, I don't think, I mean, judges are selected randomly to matters, yeah. So, I mean, it's, oh, I'm not, I'm not responsible for selecting judges. Okay, all right. Thanks yep. everybody. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks for coming. We'll send you media alerts and releases. Thank you.